just allow God to come in and worship with us this morning. God, we just come to you this morning. We just thank you, God, for everything. Thank you for the rain. We thank you for each other. God, we just we thank you for your grace and mercy. God, we just invite you into this place this morning just to, just to spend time with you and grow close to you this morning, God. We pray for everybody that's sick, everybody that's hurting, all the needs this morning. We always have a lot of needs, God, and we need you. Just be with us as we go through this week and just help us to grow closer to you until we meet again. In your name we pray. Amen.
Good morning. Golly. Y'all on it this morning. Hey, if you, for all you kids in here, sixth grade and under, that want to go to Children's Church, Miss Ravens, fixing to be back there waiting on you. Hey, I, I want to share something with you guys this morning that, man, it's just something that I was riding down the road this week and, and something happened and, and I thought about something and I, I thought, man, I just could not get away from this word. And, and so, man, this morning I, I want to share something with you and I hope you listen because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that, man, if there's something going on, if there's an issue you're struggling with in life, that this can help fix that. And I, and I know it not because I'm smart or intelligent, but I know Man, I, I want to show you this morning in God's Word. But so th- this week I was driving, and I can't remember what day it was because it seems to happen every day these days. But something started happening, like the sky there was nothing in it. Then all of a sudden, these little drops of water started falling from it. Right? It seems to happen every single day, all day, and and the ground is just saturated. But I, I was driving through Inverness and. Man, it was kind of cloudy and overcast, and then all of a sudden, for any of you guys that work up there or whatever, man, you'll know whatever day it was, man, the, the just it just came a downpour. And, and I was sitting there in traffic, and, and, and most of the time we're like gripping because it's raining, right? So that's what we do, or at least I do, and maybe y'all don't. But anyway, and so I just remember sitting there thinking, I mean, it was pouring down rain, and I was sitting there in the Tahoe, and I was like, man, I am dry and I'm comfortable. And I started thinking about all those people Man, that I see and pass on the streets that are homeless and, and don't have anywhere to go or, or, or whatever. And I'm like, man, something hit me. I, I realized something. I, I took something for granted a lot of times, but I just stopped right there. And I thank God that I was dry and comfortable. Like in that moment. And, and I know that that's, man, that's just, it, it's not much. I know because we take it for granted, right? Because if y'all got here, I didn't see anybody walking and nobody rode their horse this morning. So it means everybody drove here in a car, right? And so we take for granted that, man, we get to ride in comfort. And so I know when it rains, we just expect to be dry a lot of times. But, man, for me in that moment, I just like, man, thank you. God, thank you that I just have this comfort to be dry right this moment. This morning, if you got your Bibles, I want to share a story with you, and we're going to, I got to do, I'm going to share a lot of stories, but Luke chapter 17, there's a story that I want to share with you guys this morning, but before we do, let's just, let's just stop for a second and pray. Father, I just come to you, Lord, I thank you so much for this day, God, if I could design the weather for today, I could not have done, man, it is absolutely gorgeous, and for that, I am thankful. God, I'm thankful to be here. God, I'm thankful for this barn. I'm thankful for this property. God, I'm thankful for what you've allowed us to see you do here over the last several years. Father, I'm thankful for your word. God, I'm thankful for every single person that's sitting in the seat this morning, every single person that will watch us online at some point. God, I'm thankful for them. Father, most of all, I'm thankful for what you did in allowing your son to go to the cross for me because I realize I didn't deserve it. Father, this morning I pray, Lord, that, man, it would be your words and not mine. I don't want to say that because we all say that and it sounds so cliche. But, Father, I just pray this morning that you would speak. God, that your word would become alive and relevant today. Father, I pray it be every one of your thoughts and every one of your words. And I ask these things in your most precious name. Amen. So, so in Luke chapter 17, there's this story, and, and some of you might have heard this story before. But in Luke chapter 17, Jesus is going around and, and he's teaching and preaching. And, and so they come into town. And this is what in Luke chapter 17, verse 11, it says. It says, as Jesus continued toward Jerusalem, he reached the border between Galilee and Samaria. As he entered a village there, ten leopards stood at a distance crying out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And he looked at them and said, go show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed of their le- leprosy. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back to Jesus shouting, Praise God. He fell to the ground at Jesus' feet, thanking him for what he had done. And this man was a Samaritan. And Jesus asked, Didn't I heal ten men? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And Jesus said to them, said to the man, Stand up and go. Your faith has healed you. 
There is so much about this one story that we could just stop and talk about. Like the simple fact that, man, that they didn't even, Jesus told them to go to the priest. And the Bible says that, that he didn't have to get to the priest, right? They just had to go. They just had to trust that Jesus told them to do this part. And that's what healed them. Not when they actually got to the priest. And, and the simple fact here, too, I think we hear leprosy a lot of times, and we don't really understand that or wrap our mind around it. But, like, if you were a leper back then, you were an outcast. Like, you were, it, it, let's just imagine, and I hate to bring up this, but let's just imagine it's, it's three years ago and you just found out you got COVID, right? Like, you're stuck in this room over here by yourself. Like, like that's how the lepers were. Like, they, they couldn't be around other people, which means they were exiled from their family. They couldn't see their kids. They couldn't see their, their wife or their husband. Husband, their their parents, they couldn't go to work, they couldn't do this, they couldn't do that, and it wasn't a thing that they were going to get better from. See, if you had leprosy, it was pretty much a death sentence because until you died, you were going to be secluded. So there's these ten dudes there, and they're sitting there, and they've been struggling with leprosy, and there's no cure, there's no nothing. And so Jesus comes along and he heals them, and instead of coming back and thanking him, they just go. And it's really easy to, to get caught up and be like, well, man, that's sorry for them not to thank him. But in my mind, I'm like, well, they've been away from their family for so long. And, and, and so I'm sure they're ready to get back and, and do this and that. But how many times do we do the same thing? How many times is, is there something that happens in our life and like, man, we are what, like, man, God, you're the only thing that can fix this in our lives. And, and we pray and we plead and, and we beg and, and then finally God answers it. And we're like, woohoo. And we just go on, right? I don't know about you, but I've been there. Like, the, like things that I've just been like, man, God, I need your help. I, I need you to intervene. I need you to step into. And guess what? It happens. And I go and I forget. Sometimes I am thankful like the guy that came back. And, and I would say this morning, there's probably two people in here. Are two groups of people. There, there's a group of people that are probably thankful, and there's a group of people that forget a lot. And I know that because nothing's changed in 2,000 years. Some of us are thankful, some of us aren't. And I've probably been in both camps, and probably in one more so than I would like to admit. But most of the time, I think we probably are, at the end of the day, usually thankful, right? Like, man, when we see God doing something in our lives, like, Man, man, how about this? How many of you guys, <coughs> excuse me, how many of you guys remember that have had children, man, that, that remember the first time you held that little boy or that little girl in your arms? I don't know about you, but I couldn't help but be thankful in that moment. How about this? How about, because I know there's a bunch of ugly dudes in here. How, how many of y'all, when you realized that she said yes in front of God and everybody, you were thankful, right? Because you didn't think you would ever outkick your coverage and marry somebody as pretty as her. How about this? How about that time that you got that job that you'd always wanted? It's easy to be thankful right then. What, what, what about that time that you started that business that you'd been working and saving and putting money back for so you could do and you finally opened the doors and, and it's becoming successful and you're like, man, well, what about that time, that thing you really, really wanted and it finally came through? And you're like, God, thank you. Thank you. I've never watched a guy, a, a believer of, of, of anything, of any baseball team, of any rodeo event, when they get on the biggest stage in the world, most people that are believers, when they win, they say, man, I just want to give God the glory. Most of us would be that way, right? I, I think most of the time when things are going good, that's kind of where I'm at. But how many times do we see the team that lost say the same? How many times do we see the people that have put the work in, put the effort in, be thankful? It's this morning, there, there's four stories I want to share with you guys this morning of, of times, man, when it's not, it's not opportune for us to be thankful. But, but I hope this morning that you can see the consequences and the repercussions because I do feel like there's principles in this book that we just write off as old stories and, and we don't feel like they can apply to us today. But, but I hope this morning that if you'll just listen to these stories and think about how that actually affects your own personal life, man, they do run parallel. In Matthew chapter 15, there's a story that, that I want to share with you guys, and most of you have heard this story as well. 
But Matthew chapter 15, Jesus is going around and he's teaching and he's and he's all these people are following him. And even when Jesus tries to get away from them, man, more people follow him. And, and there's two different stories in the Bible of the same thing happening. And, and, and both of them, Jesus does the same thing. But I'm going to share this one. There's one story where Jesus, there's 5,000 people, the Bible says, 5,000 men, more than that, because it says there's 5,000 men. So that means their wives and their kids were there as well. And so Jesus is feeding these people and there's not enough food. Well, in this story, in Matthew chapter 15, there's 4,000 people that have come to watch Jesus. And in Matthew, in Matthew chapter 15, verse 33, it says, The disciples replied, because Jesus has just told them to, for you to feed them, he said, where would we get enough food here in the wilderness for such a huge crowd? And Jesus asked, how much bread do you have? And they replied, seven loaves and a few small fish. So Jesus told all the people to sit down on the ground. And then he took the seven loaves the fish, thanked God for them, and broke them into pieces. And he gave them to the disciples to distribute the food to the crowd. You might not think much about that, but how many of you that are sitting here this morning, like you know what life entails this next week. You, you know what life entails next month. You know what life entails next year. And you know this, you don't have enough. And it's really easy to think about that in terms of money and monetarily, but that's, and maybe that's what it is, and, I, and I'm not that guy that's going to say, man, it's health, wealth, and wellness. I, I'm not that guy, but I'm just saying, maybe you don't have enough talent, maybe you don't have enough ability to do what it is that you know is going to have to be done. Maybe you don't have enough time. Maybe you look at your schedule and you're like, man, God, there's not enough time for this. Here's what I need you to hear in this story. The Bible says there was 4,000 men plus all their families there, and Jesus had seven loaves of bread and a few fish. But Jesus didn't take out his wand from behind him and, and do some kind of hocus pocus. It says Jesus took the fish and the, bread, the loaves of bread and he broke it, but don't miss this. It says then he took the seven loaves and the fish and he thanked God for them and he broke them into pieces. It says in this story when he got through feeding over 4,000. And I want to make sure that you hear this, and I'm not just making this up. It says, they all ate as much as they wanted. Afterward, the disciples picked up seven large baskets of leftover food, and there were 4,000 men who were fed that day, in addition to all the women and children. Then Jesus sent the people home, and he got into a boat and crossed over the region. I need you to hear this. Not only was there enough, but there was an abundance. And there's nothing in that story. There, there, there's nothing like Jesus doesn't say they, they did this or they did that. It just simply says Jesus took it and he was just thankful. He was thankful for the little he had. How many times are we thankful for the little we have? I, if I'm just being honest with you, most of the time I'm not thankful for the little I have. I, I'm envious of what others have. Most of the time, I'm like, man, God, if I had that, if I had this, if I had that, if I could get this, if you would bless me with that, then I could do what they're doing. That's not what Jesus did. The Son of God is sitting here, and he knows that he doesn't have but just a little bit of food, and there's all these people that are hungry, and he just simply thanked God for what he had. But see, a lot of times we're like, well, I'm going to be thankful for what I have, but what about when you, what you have is not enough? What about when what you have is not enough? How many things, how many different outcomes would come if we were just thankful for what we don't have? Maybe that's not where you're at this morning. Maybe this morning you're at a place and you know something bad's coming. Like, like you've already been to the doctor and they've already given you a diagnosis. Maybe, maybe this morning or, or, or this week your spouse came in and said, hey, I'm done. Maybe this week that, that your boss came in and said, hey, we don't need you anymore. And so right now, you're, you're staring yourself in the mirror every morning when you brush your teeth, and you're like, man, I know what's coming, and it's not good. You know what most of us tend to do in those situations? We tend to hang our head and pout and whine because we're poor, pitiful us. We want everybody to feel sorry for us, and we even want to feel sorry for ourselves. In the book of Daniel, there's this story, and, and, and I'm not going to read the whole story to you, but I would encourage you to go back and read it. But in Daniel, man, Daniel is a man. He, he is the guy, like the whole world, I'm not going to say the whole world, but the whole kingdom, the whole town, that, man, that, they are just all about anti-God. Like, like they're not about, and it's not they're just anti-God, they're just not about worshiping God, they're about bettering themselves, they're about 
bowing down to the king. They're, they're about, man, everything that we look around in our world right now and see happening as well. But Daniel was different. Daniel knew where his loyalty lied. And so there were some people that didn't like Daniel that were in power, and, and they knew how to play on the king's mind and, 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 and on the, his, his thoughts about himself. And, and so, man, they go to the king, and they're like, hey, let's make a law. Let, let's make a, a law that anybody that doesn't bow down to you, we're going to throw them in the, in the den of lions. And so that's what they did, and the king was feeling all, man, heck yeah, everybody's going to be bowing down to me, but he forgot about his friend Daniel. And so Daniel's just going about through his day, and it's almost like CNN or Fox came on, and Daniel heard through the grapevine what the law had been passed. I don't, I don't know about you guys, but how many times have you turned on the news and you heard something that was going to be detrimental to you or your family? And so we go to the coffee shop, we go to the feed store, and we're like, man, I, I don't know what we're going to do. Man, that, that's going to wreck us out. That, that's going to... Man, we're going to lose our farm. We're going to lose our business. My kids are, are not going to be able to eat. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. That's what we do, right? We hear news, and then we just drop our head in defeat. Let me tell you what Daniel did. If you read in Daniel chapter 6, verse 10, I'm not going to read the exact verse to you, but, but you can go look it up, Daniel 6, Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. It says something like this. It says, Daniel went home and got on his knees. And prayed. But if you read that verse, it says this. It says, just like he always did, he thanked God. How many of you, if you were sitting in here today and you knew that you had pretty much been given a death sentence, how many of you are going to go home and thank God for what happened? How many of you are going to go home and be like, God, thank you that I'm fixing to die? Thank you for, for everything you've done. Thank you for the fact that I'm going through this hardship. Thank you for the fact that I'm fixing to die. That's exactly what Daniel did. But you know why Daniel was able to do that? Because that's what Daniel did every single day. Daniel knew how to walk with a heart of thankfulness in all circumstances, in all situations. And, and, and I want to be that so bad. I don't ever want to be that guy that gets down and out and like, man, this is crap. Life's crap. That's crap. This is crap. And man, it's just all doom and gloom. But I know for a fact that there's got to be some people here this morning and you've been facing something and you know it's coming. Like, it hasn't come yet. You know it's coming. And you just got your head hung down. This morning, I want to encourage you to be thankful in this moment. Not when you've found victory, but in this moment. Maybe Daniel's not enough for you. In Luke chapter 22, starting in verse 17, there's another story of another guy who was fixing to go through some hard stuff. In Luke chapter 22, Jesus and the disciples are sitting down at the Passover meal. Some people would call it the Last Supper. This is what Jesus does. He says, then he took a cup of wine and he gave thanks for it. And then he said, take this and share it among yourselves, for I will not drink wine again until the kingdom of God has come. And then he took some bread and he gave thanks to God for it. And then he broke it into pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took another cup of wine and said, This cup is a new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice. Jesus knew what was coming. I think it's easy for me, or, or maybe not you, but I know it is. I was going to say for us, but for me, it's so easy to think about Jesus in that story and be like, well, he's the son of God, so he's, it's not going to affect him the way it affects me. But the Bible clearly says that Jesus came in man form, like he was fully man and fully God at the same time. And I'm just being honest with you, it's hard for me to wrap my small little brain around that. But that's what the Bible says. And so Jesus felt pain, he felt hurt, he felt agony, he felt all the things that me and you felt. And Jesus knew he was fixing to be crucified on the cross. He knew he was fixing to be beaten, whipped, spit on, kicked, made fun of, embarrassed. He knew all that stuff was fixing to happen. And he's sitting there at dinner. And it says he took a cup of wine and he took the bread. And before he did anything else, he gave thanks. This morning, maybe you know what's coming. This morning, maybe you know, like, hey, it's not going to be good. 
Like, like what's coming is not going to be good. I want to encourage you this this morning. And this is so hard. Like, I, I'm, not, I'm not preaching to you. I'm preaching at us because it is so hard when, man, things happen. And you know it's not going to be good to be thankful. But when I look at these stories and I see the outcome on the other side, I see how important it is for us to be thankful. Maybe this morning, it's not you know what's coming. But maybe this morning, you're in the middle of it. Maybe this morning, you're going through a divorce. Maybe this morning, you're walking through whatever diagnosis the doctor's already given you, and, and, and it's not good. And maybe this morning, you look at your finances, and it's not good. Maybe this morning, you, you look at your occupation, and it's not good. Maybe this morning, you look at, at this or that, and it's not good. And so that thing that you know was coming has already come. So now what do we do? There's a story, and it, it, it's coming so, so to be my, one of my most favorite stories in the whole Bible. And, I, and I've shared this before in Acts chapter 27. Paul finds himself on a boat, and he knew he had to get to Rome, but he was going as a prisoner, and that's not how he intended it. And Paul told the ship captain and the crew, like, hey, guys, it's not smart for us to go. We need to chill right here. And, and they went on about because they knew better. And the Bible says that great storms came up. And, and we talked about before how they started doing all this crazy stuff, like throwing all the cargo off and, and this, that, and the other. And it talks about in there in that story in Acts chapter 27 about how, man, this had gone on and that had gone on. And so everybody, I don't know if you've ever been in that place where you're in the middle of the storm and like you don't even want to eat. You don't want to sleep. You don't want to eat. You, you don't want to do nothing. You, you just want to sit there because your life is in such turmoil because you're in the middle of the storm. I need you to hear what Paul says in Acts chapter 27. I'm going to start in 33, but I want you to hear what 35 says. It says, just as day was dawning, Paul urged everyone to eat. You have been so worried that you haven't touched food for two weeks, he said. Please eat something now for your own good, for not a hair on your heads will perish. Listen to what verse 35 says. It says, then he took some bread and he gave thanks to God before them all, and he broke off a piece and ate it. Can you imagine? What about this? Because here's the deal. I, I don't know about y'all, but so many times in my life, man, some, I've, I've suggested somebody do something or, or I, I've, I've tried to help somebody do this and, and like they didn't listen, right? They're like they didn't listen. And I'm sure there's some of y'all sitting in here today who've been like, Matt, I've known you a long time and there's some times when I've told you you should do this and you didn't listen. So I know that goes both ways. I'm not saying anything by that. But Paul told these guys and they didn't listen. But yet Paul was in the same boat that these people were, the ones that he tried to warn what was coming. And so, man, they're all in a bad spot. They're, they're all on a boat that's destined for shipwreckness. I don't even know if that's a word, shipwreckness. But that's where they're headed. And so, man, that's where they're at. But in the midst of that, in that storm that's going on around him, in the midst of Paul knowing that he's the only one and everybody else's mindset is totally different, Paul, in front of all of them, with everything that's going on, encourages them to eat, and he takes the bread and gives thanks to God. But you know what's crazy to me about this story? Because 35 is powerful. 35 is powerful. The fact that in the middle of the storm, Paul stops and he gives thanks to God before he takes a bite. But listen to what 36 says. It says, then everyone was encouraged and began to eat. Because of Paul's thankfulness, all those around him, Paul had been telling them for weeks and days, like, hey guys, we don't need to do this. We, this is the wrong way. This is not the path we need to go. He had been telling them that. And because of his thankfulness, it affected the rest of them. Let me ask you guys this. The next time you go in the grocery store and complain about how high the food is, the next time you stop at the gas station and gripe about how expensive the gas is, the next time that you do this or you do that and we gripe and complain, it's not only us. It's those that are around you that will be affected. But I just read you a story of how your thankfulness can impact, impact and affect those around you. This morning, maybe you're like, well, that's, that's good stuff, man. 
Like, I, I understand, like, man, that we should be thankful when we don't have enough. We should be thankful when we know something bad's coming. We should be thankful, man, in the middle of the storm. But this morning, I, maybe you're like, dude, I, I, I struggle. And, and, you know, if you look around in the country we live in, you don't have to look far to realize how blessed that we really are. You don't have to look far to realize how much better off as a country, even, even in all the stuff we could complain about, we have it better than other countries. But maybe this morning you're struggling. Maybe this morning you're struggling to find something to be thankful for. Maybe it's just been, you're at that spot and you're like, man, I, I just can't get there, Matt. I want to share something with you this morning. Because at the end of the day, Man, all those things, it, it, it's great that we can go purchase food and we can provide for our family. It's great that we can go buy gas. And I'm not saying, I'm not that guy, I promise you. It, I, I hate it. I hate inflation is crap. But I get it. But I know this too. There's people that can't go buy. There's people that can't go get it. What in the world do I have the right to be upset? I should be thankful that I can even if it's not, even if I can't go get steak, if I can go get saltine crackers and tuna fish, man, I, we had to go to the grocery store yesterday, and I didn't realize tuna fish was so cheap. Like you can get a whole pack of tuna fish for a dollar forty-eight. Like I'm just, I, I didn't know that. I will say this because I've been on this fish kick, and like if you buy a tuna steak, it's more than a dollar forty-eight, right? But it's really good. But anyway, but I'm like, man, I could, I can live off tuna fish sandwiches. You know what I'm saying? Like I, 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 I I'm sorry, I don't know where. Anyway, but I'm just saying this morning, like if you don't have anything, if you're struggling, but this morning, if there's ever been a time in your life where you know that you asked Jesus to come live in your heart, nothing else, we should be thankful for that. Because at the end of the day, God never promised us wealth. He never promised us health. He never promised us prosperity. I think there's principles in this book that if we're obedient to, that blessings come following that. But not a single one of us in here are, are promised any of that. But here is the promise that he did make. That we'll put our faith and hope and trust in him. That this is not our home. That this is not where we end up. That when we draw our last breath here and they put us in the ground, that that's not the end. Ephesians 1, I'm going to read all of it. Ephesians 1, 3 says, All praise to God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in every spiritual blessing in heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do and it gave him great pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. He has showed the kindness on us along with all the wisdom and understanding. God has now revealed to us his mysterious plan regarding Christ, a plan to fulfill his own good pleasure and this is a plan. At the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ, everything in heaven on earth. And furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God, for he chose us in advance, and he makes everything work out according to his plan. Guys, at the end of the day, I have a faith and a hope in knowing that when I draw my last breath here, that I get to spend eternity with him. And if you're sitting here this morning and you've ever made that decision, I, I'm not talking about you repeated some words. I'm talking about you know in your heart that you asked Jesus to come live in your heart. Then guess what? At the end of the day, regardless if my world is crumbling around me, I have something to be thankful for. When the doctors say it's, it's no good, when the checkbook says it's no good, when the, the, the employment says it's no good, when, when whatever is going on says it's no good, at the end of the day, I have something to be thankful for. Because for whatever reason, God loved me enough to send his son to die on the cross. And I know how undeserving and, and I how worthless of a person I am and how I don't deserve that at all. And I have that to be thankful for. If you're in that same place this morning, I just want to encourage you guys. Man, be thankful. Be, be thankful when you know something bad's coming. Be thankful when there's not enough. Be thankful in the middle of the storm. And be thankful when He cures you from that thing that's been over you for so long. 
But even when you can't find any of that to be thankful for, guys, we should always be thankful for what it was that Jesus did on the cross. I think in our culture, in our country, we take that so much for granted because we all grow up living in the Bible Belt, right? We know it's church, and we just thought we go to church, and we don't really realize the sacrifice that Jesus made by going to the cross. Maybe this morning you're sitting here and you've never made that decision. Maybe this morning you can't be thankful for that because you don't know what that feels like. Maybe, maybe this morning you went to Bible school one time when you were a kid and, and all your friends came to the front. And, and, and so this morning there's something going on in your head right now. And, and it's not me. It's the Holy Spirit that's nudging you, that's speaking to your heart. And so maybe this morning it's the time for you to truly meet him. Because once you truly, truly met him, I, I've told you all this before. I, at 12 years old, I went to a judgment house in Pell City, Alabama, at First Baptist Church. And, and I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, we went through that deal. And, and we went to the high school football game. And then we went to the, the party afterwards. And for you guys that don't know what judgment house is, it's pretty much a, a, a horror house. And they put a cross on it. I mean, at the end of the day, it'll scare the crap out of you. So you go through all these scenes, right? And so we're at the party. And And half of them's drinking, half of them's not, and half of them know Jesus, and half of them don't. And we get in the car, and we watch them, and they crash, and they and they die. And so, man, we go, and and like, man, half the kids that are there, they go to heaven. And so, man, it's cold in there, and like just, just like rainbows and unicorns, right? And so you leave there, and you go to hell, and it's hot. And and then after that deal's over with, man, they bring you all back in this big room, and you're sitting there, and they share the gospel. But then they do something, and I don't agree with this. And it really scares me that there's a lot of people that got scared out of hell. But they're like, hey, who, wants to, who, who, who doesn't want to go to hell? Well, I promise you, at 12 years old, I raised my hand because I, I didn't want no part of that. And so I repeated some words, and, and I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm glad I don't have to know. Because I, I, I would say I was saved. I don't, I'm not sure. But I do know this. Eleven years ago, there was a little boy that came into my life, and God used him to completely change it. And on that road right out there, something happened different. Because it wasn't doing something in a church, but it was something that happened in here. So I can stand before you right now and be thankful because I truly know in my heart what it's like to know Jesus. And I don't want to confuse you. I don't want to make you doubt your faith. That's not what I'm asking. But I, I can say this. I can truly be thankful for that because I know the difference. So maybe this morning you're like, man, I, I, I did this or I did that, but I, I didn't really feel any difference. This morning you have the opportunity. Because you've got to know this. You're not here for just happenstance. If you showed up this morning, it's because God wanted you here for His plan and His purpose. That's what I just read in Ephesians. So what are you going to do with this opportunity? Just a second, I'm going to pray. And in this moment, it's simply this. It's not some doctrine. It's not some repeating some words after a preacher. It's just simply saying, God, I'm messy. I'm messy. But I believe in my heart. And I realize that I'm a sinner. And I believe in my heart that what Jesus did on the cross, he did for me. And I want some of that. I promise you, it'll change your life. And it'll give you something to always be thankful for. Let's pray. Father, I just come to you this morning, Lord. I thank you so much for your word, God. I thank you for this time. God, man, I pray this morning that we just not have just heard what your word said, but God, we would apply it to our lives. God, that we would be thankful when that thing that we've just been struggling with that is haunted us, that you take away. God, I pray we'd not be like the nine, but we'd be like the one. God, when there's not enough, when, when there's not enough, when we don't, we don't have the provisions we need, Father, I pray we'd be thankful for what it is that we have. God, I pray this morning that there's somebody in that spot and they know there's not, there's not enough. Father, I pray that you would bless their thankfulness. God, you a blessing in abundance. And God, I know with this many people sitting here this morning, there's more than one person that's that knows that something bad's coming this week, this month, before the end of the year. God, I pray that this morning that they would be encouraged to be thankful like Daniel. Man, they wouldn't waver. But God, I also pray this morning for those people that find themselves in that spot, Lord, that they could also know what it feels like to be Daniel when they rolled the stone away the next morning and you had sealed the lion's mouth shut. 
God, I thank you so much for being thankful when you know you're going to the cross. Father, I know this morning there's as many people as here, there's somebody that's in the middle of it right now. Man, it looks like a death sentence all the way around. It looks like what, what they're going through looks like is the thing that's going to be, that's going to defeat them. Father, I pray that they would be like Paul. Be thankful in the middle of their struggle. God, I pray that every single person sitting here this morning that's ever put their faith in you would know that regardless of what's going on around us, that we should always be thankful for what you did on the cross. God, this morning, I pray if there's somebody sitting here and they don't know what it's like to be thankful for that because they never had the opportunity to meet you, that this morning they could realize that they don't have to come down front. They don't have to do this. They don't have to do that. God, your word just simply says if we're willing to admit that we're a sinner, just like the thief on the cross, and put our belief in you, then we'll be saved. And Father, when they realize that this world is not the end, they have something to eternally be grateful for. Father, I pray right now, man, if that person or persons is sitting here this morning, that today's their day. God, I pray as we leave here, Lord, that we would be thankful and that other people would see our thankfulness so that we could be like Paul and it could affect others as well. God, I love you so much. I praise you and I ask these things in the most precious name. Amen. Guys, y'all have an awesome day.